another year, 2021. We got this bike. When I mean we, I mean my sister because <laughs> would I ever buy this thing? No. So welcome back to Shelby Bolt. This is a place where we try to help you have peace, love, hope, and joy and just grow with your faith in God and also have some fun times vlogging and enjoy life because might as well enjoy it while we're here, right? What has been happening? Where have I been? I've been at college and I've been waiting to get my new computer so I can edit videos. Look who has arrived, it's Luna. Say hello to the new member of the family. Hi Luna. So today I figured I would talk to you about my journey, my faith journey, um, going to a Christian college, as well as going through some personal issues as well because I know I'm not the only one who has them and I know I can help other people talking about these types of things like depression. It's just been really cool seeing how God has been at work in those different areas in my life and I'm really like pumped to get back on rolling with my channel and it's a new year, it's a new day, so I'm ready for a fresh start with this. And yeah, first, I showed you my workout bike. Not mine, my sister's, because we're gonna be working out today in my basement and it is one of the cleanest basements you'll ever see. Not, it's not clean, it is gross, it's scary, but you know what, a basement is a basement and we're making the best of it, so. Are you ready for today's show? Yeah, I need to see people. So to start off, we're going to get changed to work out and we're gonna head down and pop some jams, so. Let's get this show on. Like, comment, and subscribe. Cause yeah! And we are here. I got my workout clothes on. So I got some nice camo shorts. Ready to hit the weights. So over here, I have some very important things. My water, my phone for some music, and my AirPods, which are in a sushi case. It is lit. Yes, it is. Right here, we have a gym mat where I usually do deadlifts or my ab workouts. And in this creepy dark room, which we are going to turn the light on, is my weight set. So this is not your normal weight set, let me tell you. There's no hold for the bar on the outside of the weight rack as there normally would. This thing is probably made in the 70s because it's really old. But you know what, we used it. So I'm gonna be taking this bar off and I'm gonna be working my legs today, so we'll do some deadlifts. But first, let's stretch. <laughs> wow. I'm going to get the bar out from the rack and put some weights on it. Start some deadlifts. I'm so excited! <laughs> Just did a little warm up, 25 pounds on the side, so that's 50, plus the bar, which is 45 pounds, so that's 95. Here we go with 150. Going to get a shower and then we're going to talk about my faith journey 
and depression. I understand that as a Christian it can be a little intimidating to approach this subject. There's this weird atmosphere sometimes in the church that we always have to be like happy and just like on fire for Jesus but it's important to acknowledge that as Christians we're called to go through sufferings Jesus lived a life of suffering and that also means that we're going to go through these journeys and they're going to either bring us closer to Christ or push us away and God means to call us to himself through these emotions and through these difficulties so I'm going to talk about that and how God has called me um, during that journey and those struggles so see you after the shower hello again I haven't really talked about my testimony yet and how I came to become a Christian so I figured I'd do that and that will transition into my story about what happened to me in college and my depression I was about seven years old when I accepted Christ as my savior. I had a lot of family problems that weren't really talked about and kind of like swept under the rug. I ended up in a lot of dysfunction in the family and mental health, mental patterns that formed that shouldn't have formed during that time. I had trouble handling my emotions. Not like I had anger issues or anything. It was more of like how I communicate my emotions and that I tend to bury a lot of things inside of me uh, because of that pattern that was just built at a very young age and that I tended to keep those things to myself or try to just like move on, which isn't healthy at all. Um, but I'm going to get into that later. But despite all these issues and disappointments in my life, God was always there. God was always there for me. And he was my refuge. And he was my heavenly father who was holding my hand through all of this. And I know that um, it's sometimes hard to feel like God is there in all these problems. But... He is there and he says he's there for his kids. And if you're his child, you can have peace knowing that God will always be with you and that he'll never abandon you. And whatever he has allowed in your life, he has allowed for a reason. College. This is where everything <laughs> falls apart. First of all, college is amazing. Um, I meet so many wonderful friends, especially being away from the tensions at home. It was really good for me and I felt like that burden was lifted, um, at least I thought, at that time during the beginning of college. And I was reading my Bible. I felt like I was doing good in my faith. I was a healthy Christian. So how does something so bad happen as my climatic depression episode? I was doing a lot of reflecting of things at home and just how all the situations that like and the things I went through there's so much hurt in my family and brokenness and I just felt the weight of it all so the climax when things just really went <laughs> bad it was a night it was probably in October I believe that I was just walking around um, with my friend and talking to her about you know sharing with her some of my story I remember Psalm 23 2 through 3 he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. As I was like telling her about all these things I was going through, I was pretty much saying like, yeah, you know, God is like, God has been doing like a lot in my life. He changed me for the better through these things. But I realized as I was like talking to her about it, I don't feel like I have recovered from all this, even though like it already happened and that these things are away from me right now. Like there's still pain inside of me and I can't seem to move on from it. And there's just this like darkness that keeps trying to come over me. I just felt overwhelmed with so much grief. I wanted God to take it all away and I felt like he wasn't going to. And after she left, the next part I'm going to be talking about having some suicidal thoughts. This is a very serious topic and a very emotional topic. And you can skip this part if it makes you too emotional, but just a warning that I'm just going to be talking about this. So after she left me, I was walking around a little more by myself, which 
is a red flag. If you are feeling down, you should not be by yourself. I was just praying to God, just like restore me. I still felt the pain inside me, even though I was asking for him to take it away. And that is when I had this very heavy darkness come over me. I can't even explain it. And I started walking away from people, walking away from campus and the hub of life. And I started crying as I was doing this. And as I was having these thoughts of harming myself and um, just, I felt like something very bad was going to happen if I kept going, but I still kept walking. I came to the edge of campus and I remember there being this long road on the side and I just stopped. I wasn't able to move. And it wasn't like I had this light bulb moment that was like, oh, there's hope. Everything's going to be fine. I just knew that if I did anything to hurt myself, no good was going to come out of it. It was a dead end. So I just stood there for a little. There was just like an emptiness inside of me. I don't really know how to describe it, but if you ever considered those feelings, maybe you know how that feels afterward. But I called my friend to come and get me because I knew I couldn't be alone during that time and that I needed someone there. As I was waiting, I saw someone biking down the road. I recognized it to be my one friend <laughs> and this isn't the same one who I called. I quickly, you know, I tried to pretend that I didn't know it was her because I didn't want her to see me because I was like an emotional train wreck. The lowest I've ever been. I'm turning around, like leaning over the railing and then I hear, Shelby? I'm like, oh. As soon as she said my name, I just broke down crying. I knew God brought her there to comfort me. It was so hard having that comfort come after I had those thoughts because I remember when I was walking away from everyone, I was just like, I felt like I couldn't hear God's voice at all and that he wasn't there. But I know he was there. Even if I couldn't feel it, he was there. And he sent that help afterward to me um, with my friend. And eventually my other friend came to pick me up. But I was just so shocked after what happened. And as my two friends walked me back, I remember just feeling so empty inside and I felt like I was dead. I felt like a walking dead person. The walking dead, I felt like the walking dead. It was very scary and frightening. This was like a few days after, um, you know, my dark episode. I journaled how God spoke to me. I started to feel his strength pour into me as I leaned into him. I was at this point where I just felt like so broken, I just like sat before God. I'm just like, God help me, God strengthen me. And he directed me to his word in a certain passage. And I'll mention that. So here is what was going through in my mind. I'm shocked it happened and grieved deeply. The day went slowly by until I found my time with you, God. I got on my knees, an empty, delicate shell. I bowed my head and whispered to you. I asked boldly for you to stand up, raise your arm, and fill me with power and to drive out the dark forces against me. Using your name, Jesus, I commanded them to leave. Then I opened your word. Psalm 57, 2, 3. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. I had a dream two, three years ago, sitting before someone in a white robe, and I believe it was Jesus, and I knew it was him, like, it was weird that I knew it was him for some reason, in the dream, I knew it was God, and I just threw my arms around him, and I cried out, Father, and I was crying, and I remember him asking me, why are you crying? And then he said, I have a purpose for you. When I just read this, I cried out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. I knew that everything that I was going through was part of his plan. He was with me in that and I wasn't alone that night. He was there. Something good was going to come out of this. It continues in verse 4. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples me. God will send out his steadfast love and faithfulness. 
I wept with joy, knowing that he was watching me closely and speaking to me clearly. Verse 7. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my way, but they have fallen into it themselves. Yes, I thought to myself, feeling a fire burn within me. They have. So clearly did I see the evil one who tried to destroy me that night. I was filled by God's power, by his anger and his hatred for evil, and I went to war. I marched into the room of prayer at my college and took one of the prayer requests out. We have this wall of prayer requests, and normally I would go in and read them and then pray for them. I saw a note that said, I feel better off dead. And when I saw that, I prayed fervently for that person that was being tormented. And I truly believe I made Satan fear and tremble because he knew that he was not going to touch them. I am filled with God's fury and it is manifesting itself into a die hard, pray hard love. I am God's warrior of light. I go on and saying that I'm ready to fight for these people who are going through these difficult things as I am and I know that this is my purpose. This is the purpose that he has for me. Then I had a bunch of amazing things happen um, between that period and now where God brought other people who were having depression um, to support me and we just had this network, a network of support like these people who are going through depression with me and we started meeting up and having dinner together. It was just like really amazing to be able to pray for one another and to lean on each other for that. And I knew that having this network is really beneficial to me. And I know it will be beneficial to other people. So after a few nights of talking about an idea I was forming with them, we finally formed The Lighthouse, which is a student support group for people who have depression and anxiety. It was really amazing how God used the lighthouse to bring people with a bunch of different backgrounds and who went through a lot worse things than I ever did. It was amazing that God used me to speak into their lives and we spoke into each other's lives and supported each other through that. And I just felt myself growing a lot even though there were times that I felt alone and I felt so broken and in despair. I was forced to lean on God, to lean on others for help, and to really just grow in my knowledge. And I had to constantly pour myself into God's Word to battle the thoughts that go through your head when you have depression, which is, no one wants to be around you, you're too broken to get better, a bunch of things. I'm sure if you have depression, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You feel hopeless, you feel like you can't be around people because you'll drive them down. You just start isolating yourself, which is bad. You don't want to isolate yourself when you're feeling depressed and you just surround yourself with people so they can help you. So a lot of battling with my mind, I went to the scripture and I had to, I had like my arm coated in Bible verses. I also went on medicine. I started meeting with a counselor and that really helped me talk out what was going through me inside and how I can overcome what's happened to me and deal with it in a healthy way. I got so much better, um, especially during the lighthouse. During the lighthouse, like I had a huge shift in my mood. Also with the medicine, you know, helping me become more stable. Also with the support group, you know, we all were helping each other during that time. And I had so many beautiful moments during my time of depression. If I had that power to go back in time and never go through that depression, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade anything for that because I had some of the most precious encounters with people that I would never take back ever and I was able to help people and they were able to help me and we had such special bonds because of that. I had a really special bond with God and all of that and he supported me. He constantly reminded me that he loved me, that I can trust him and that I can have peace knowing that he was going to use this for good and he was and i was able to see the fruit of that which is really special and not a lot of people get to see the fruit of their labor but i saw the power of prayer how prayer changed the lives and the people who were coming to the lighthouse so many things i probably make another video on it so um that's what happened god is good through trial and through triumph moral of my story i guess so thanks for watching 
and I will bid you guys off with have peace, love, hope, and joy.